you, sir? Yes. If you follow the perimeter, you'll find the assembly point at the rear of the college. OK. Here we are, sir. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, there is one more in the back of the car. Don't salute. Don't call me, sir. And get that car out there of here. Sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, sir. Your mother says she'll be thinking about you every hour, every day, Good every fun. minute. Yes, sir. Carry your bag, sir. Very funny. Time flight? About 50, sir. Enough to keep the barber shop going all day. Wing Commander Rudge will be down in a minute. He's checking the GCA. I'll pick him up and he'll see them all later. Very good, sir. Break them in gently, Flight Sergeant. Like a mother, sir. <laughs> Come on out. Come on out. Stop talking. Let's have you. Three ranks in front of me. Move. Come on. Come on. Look lively. Now listen to me. Answer your names. Hudson JBD? Yeah. Connor RS? Yeah. Dalton JL? Flight. Fletcher J. Yes, Flight Sergeant. Endicott R. Here. BSC Hon. What's the decorations for? Aerodynamics and electronics, Flight Sergeant. Serves you right. Winchester? Winchester, eh? Anybody seen Winchester? Anthony Winchester! Mrs. Cranwell, darling? Hmm? Yes, unless they moved it. Now, before we go any further, we'd better have a few words so that uh, we'll understand each other. I'm here to help you to become officers. I take it you're already gentlemen. You'll find me firm, fair and friendly. I'm here to listen to your troubles with sympathy and understanding. Here, stand still when I'm talking to you. Remember at all times, should you encounter an officer, those gentlemen that have no hats will face the officer. Those gentlemen that have will raise them. No smoking on the camp roads. Keep your hair cut, rooms clean, kit tidy. Language moderate, webbing spotless. I just want you all to be happy. What's he doing? Bye, lover boy. Bye, darling. Now, take care of this. Don't go through a red light. I'll try not to. This is Cranwell, isn't it? Only my radio wasn't working and I should hate to come to the wrong place. Who gave you permission to land here? Ah, uh, well, no one exactly. You see, I have an invitation to join the party today. Party? What do you think this is, a flying club or something? Who are you, anyway? My name's Winchester. Anthony Winchester? Yes, that's right. Flight Cadet Anthony Winchester? Yes, that's the idea. Welcome to Cranwell, Mr. Winchester. Thank you. Would you mind picking up your bag, sir, and coming with me? Certainly.
Are you the one that just got out of that kite? Yes, sir. You stupid, incompetent young idiot. Do you realize how close we came to a crash? Landing crosswind like that without landing instructions? My radio wasn't working, sir. What about your eyes? Can't you see? Yes, sir. Don't you know this is a Royal Air Force station? What the devil do you mean by landing here anyway? Flying Cadet Winchester is one of the new entries, sir. Winchester? Yes, sir. Answer me, Winchester. I see. Well, I believe he's your responsibility at this stage, Flight Sergeant. My very own, sir. I know you'll teach him the facts of life here at Cranwell. I think I can manage that, sir. All right, Blake. Yes, sir. Winchester, get into that truck. All right, driver. There she goes. Isn't she lovely? Yes, lovely. That's rather a stupid way to join the RAF, Mr. Winchester. So I'm gonna, Sergeant. Flight Sergeant. No permission to land? No. Flight Sergeant. Nearly killed the wing commander. Nearly, Flight Sergeant. Bringing unauthorized females within the precincts of the college. I'll have to have a name, you know. And phone number? Yes. Get fed in with the rest of them. Come on, pick up your kit. Got it. Attend. Come on. Move to the left. Left. Turn. Left. That lady killer in the pork pie hat. Left. Left wheel. Quick. Much. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Come on, come on, pick it up. Don't you like me already, Mr. Endicott? Come on, pick him up. Left. your test run go? Oh, one or two minor adjustments, sir, but I think she'll be ready for training when we need it. Good. I hear some damn fool in a sports plane wandered into your landing class. Yes, one of the new entry. Good heavens. Unusual way to arrive at the cottage. Well, I don't propose to take any action, sir, unless you order it. All right, Granite, it's up to you. I've been glancing through the list of the new entry. Not a bad lot. John Fletcher, good type, should be all right. Edward Gray, uncle was a brigadier. Roger Endicott, Martin. This Winchester, well, wasn't his father in your squadron during the war? I was in his squadron, sir. Oh, yes, of course, yes. I remember. Well, let's have some lunch. How's the leg behaving? Well, not bad, the stainless steel. Good. <laughs> and this is where you live? There's no place like home. <laughs> what, no curtains? We don't go in for luxuries here at Cranwell. And by the way, my name's Flight Cadet Day. And that's my bed. I'm senior cadet here, responsible for discipline and general order. You'll find me fair, firm, and friendly. Right, make yourselves comfortable. Well, it's not as bad as solitary confinement, I suppose. Somebody must have filled this with ball bearings. I think I've got the rest of the wheel in here. <laughs> I suppose you're used to better things, aren't you, Witches, sir? You're not far wrong. What have we got here? A bookworm or something? <laughs> What's this? Uh, thank you. Anyway. History of aerodynamics. Advanced navigation. The truth about the flying saucer. You mind? What are you planning? A trip to the moon? Well, you never know. After all, it's only 240,000 miles away. You, know? you make it sound like next door. <laughs> well, when you go, take that flight sergeant with you. Oh, What's yeah. his name? Harris. Oh, you seemed all right. Oh, you're going to win all the medals for popularity. I can see that. I wish I could say the same for you. If you don't like discipline. I don't. Then why did you come? Well, to fly. What else? Attention. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What is your name? Fletcher, sir. Mm -hmm. And who are you? Endicott, sir. Roger Endicott. We've already met. Yes, sir. I'm Wing Commander Rudge. All of you will be in my wing. You'll discover soon enough exactly what that means. I want pilots, fighters, leaders. And we have three years to do it in. Now get yourselves sorted out. We don't waste much time here. Tomorrow morning, you'll get your first lesson in the basic rudiments of flying. Enjoy yourselves, gentlemen. Flying already? <laughs> Entry! Four! Eight! Come on, double up, double up! Three ranks from Blythe. Just for the right. Good morning, sir. Endicott. That's the next man's show. It's a salute I want from you, not a weather report. Right, yes, sir. 
Chin in, chest out. Come on, Andy Schott, look, Snappy. Stand still there. The turn, shut. Carry on, Flight Sergeant. Parade, stand up. Hey. Stand still, look to your front, and listen to me. Her Majesty's government will spend 45,000 pounds training you to become flying officers in the RAF. And it's my duty to see that we don't waste a penny of the taxpayers' money. Here is from now begins the first year of that training, during which the book says you will be subjected to pressure. I'll bet. And subjected to pressure you will be 24 hours out of the 24. If any of you think that all you've come here for is to learn how to fly, then, gentlemen, you'd better hold on to something because it'll be months and months before you learn to fly a plane. Months and months. Right, attention, turn! Move to the right! Right! Turn! By the left! Quick! March! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left! Move to the right! Right! Turn! Right, Mr. Endicott, sir, right! Come on, double up, double up! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left! Left, left, right, left, right! Get into step, Mr. Endicott, sir! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right! Ten to line! Left! Turn! Air force left, Mr. Endicott, sir! Come on, double up! Come on, double up! Come on, double up! Drop down, everybody! If you don't want to pull it through, stick it down! Now, charge! Come on, get moving! Come on, double up, double up! Get up! Go on, any good? Come on, get moving! Come on, Winchester, take the letter! <laughs> Can you sing, Mammy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Vanilla. And you have to remember that one degree port or starboard will put you off track as much as two miles in ten minutes. What are you doing, Indica? Uh, nothing, sir, really. Nothing. Well, what's that? Hmm? A flying saucer? Well, as a matter of fact, sir, it's... Are you out of your mind, Endicott? Yes, sir. No, sir. Look, why don't you pay attention? Yes, sir. <laughs> you see, what I've managed to do, sir, is put all your... Sir? Are they ready to put any of this into practice yet? It's a bit early yet, sir. It's never too early to make mistakes. Might be good for them. Serious. No, I'm growing it for a friend. <laughs> no, come on, just no, I'll get it specially sent from France. <laughs> no, I've got news for you, gentlemen. Tomorrow you fly. Pick up your flying kit at 0800 hours. Got that? Oh, marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake. Yes, sir. Now, the reason I'm coming along with you on this little excursion is to discover what you've learned during navigational training. Now, an error in the classroom may cause you some embarrassment or even your privileges. In air operations, it may cost you your lives. All right, carry on. Flying a triangular course for 30 minutes. Endicott. Sir. What is our position? 
We're now over the North Sea, sir. Take a look. Looks like uh, Lincoln Cathedral, sir. It is Lincoln Cathedral. Endicott, sir. Where are we now? Oh, we're all at sea now, sir. What was that? The Irish Sea, sir. Uh, latitude 53 degrees north, longitude 4 west, sir. Take a look. Take a look. Blackpool Tower, sir. You're doing very well. <laughs> but it's lovely in the army. Think of it, it's lovely anywhere. <laughs> Winchester, you seem amused. Suppose you navigate us back to Cranwell. Yes, sir. Navigator to pilot, new heading, 150, 190 miles, ETA over base in 48 minutes. Heading 150 now, ETA 48 minutes. Ramble's dead ahead, sir. Flight, flight, chunk. Right, stand at ease. Well, that was a lousy demonstration. The moral of this dismal little story, gentlemen, is that you've got to put your backsides in a chair, your head in your hands, and navigate a plane in your sleep. An error of two degrees is two degrees nearer the grave. A dead pilot is a burden to the treasury and an eyesore on the landscape. Right, Lieutenant Blake. Sir. These men need extra navigational training. See that they get it. Yes, sir. That's all. All right, fall out. Sir? Yes, Winchester? Well, what about me, sir? Well, what about you, Winchester? Well, I brought the letter in when I took charge, sir. I hate I thought... to disillusion you, Winchester, but had the pilot and co-pilot followed your directions, we would now be in the middle of Hyde Park. Can't always do it, can we, Winchester? Is this a new coffee machine? Oh, Winchester. No, it's my new flying saucer. Well, what does this do? No, no, don't touch it, because it's all alive, you see. When's it going to go off? It's been off. <laughs> Went off just before you came in. No, seriously, you see, what I've managed to do is to get all the power inside the... Uh, Hub itself. Now the convector power comes up through the wall of the body and goes into the valve. Oh, yes. You think I'm mad, don't you? Several big concerns have approached me about this idea of mine. And another thing. Well, these are coming back. You wait till this grows. Won't be long now, either. Little light. <laughs>
What are you doing here, Winchester? Sitting. Don't you know it's past time for lights out? Yes. What was it like in those days? Like? In the war? Yes, sir. Of course, you wouldn't know about that, would you? Hardly been born, I suppose. And what was it like? Like being awake in a nightmare. Hell of a lot of noise, a lot of stink. Sky black with aircraft. You chased them, you burned them, you blew them up. As soon as you shut them down, there were hundreds of others to take their place. If you were lucky, it was a slight case of murder. If you made a mistake or the other fellow was smarter, you'd had your war. You got to know a man pretty quickly in those days. You had to. In a week, you could learn as much about a man as would normally take a lifetime. Then, just when you got to like him, you lost him. That's how it was between your father and me. You were in his squadron, weren't you? Yes. You were there when he died. Tell me what happened. How was he killed? Well, tell me what happened. You lived through it. Sir, he's all right. Oh. That's us. Hello, Endicott. All set for tonight? Yes, but under protest. Well, you'd better make it good. These lads get pretty boisterous at the end of term, yeah. you know. As you know, it's the custom on the last week of term to call upon the junior entry to entertain us. Tonight, we are particularly privileged to have with us the Ballet Russe de Cranwell. I don't have to remind you that we have a very high standard of entertainment here at Cranwell. Therefore, if you are in any way dissatisfied with their performance, do not be afraid to express yourselves. Now, it's my proud privilege to present the Ballet Russe de Cranwell in uh, their interpretation of Tchaikovsky's ballet, The Nutcracker Suite. Doing, would you start? 
Quiet! Quiet! Would you say the ballet ruse to Cranwell oh, came now. up to expectation? Do you say that they should pay the usual profit? Well, the best thing we can do with these I'm glamorous young you ladies boys. is to give them the survival profit. Will the committee get the truck? All right, first consignment. Come on, Endicott. Winchester, that's you, Fletcher. Come on, come on, work it up. Wait a minute, where are we? Well, that's your problem, Margot. Don't get into any mischief. Charming. Look, there's a truck. Cranwell? Cranwell? I say, hold on. Take the notice, those rude fellows. Which way? Well, it's no use hauling the taxi. It's making a detour. Genius. This looks hopeful. Well, let's try him then. Excuse me, miss. I don't suppose you're going anywhere near Cranwell, are you? I go past there. Would you like a ride? Oh, yes, please. Very much. Pop in if you can find room. Thank you. We'll manage. What have you boys been up to? It's a long story, miss, but we're Cranwell cadets. Oh. Jet pilots. Oh. your first or second year at Cranwell? The first. Probably last. I'm afraid this road is very bad. Just been ploughed up by the feel of it. Do you have much trouble with this car, do you? As a matter of fact, I've been very lucky lately. Oh. I'm going this way because it's a shortcut. Where to? Stay with us. We may need you. You boys don't pass out for quite some time, then. Are you kidding? Fletcher's passed out twice already. <laughs> I said for him and not for men. Didn't get wet, did you boys? Oh no, it's all right, it'll soon dry off. Anybody want to talk off in airmen? Fancy driving two abreast. All right, boys? Yes, thank you. We were a bit nervous going through the sound barrier. Thank Good you night. very much. That was wonderful. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. What a nice girl, wasn't she, Winchester? She took a test on a roller coaster. <laughs> it's all clear, come on. Enjoy yourself, Gladys. Kiss me flat, will you? <laughs> at ease, gentlemen. I hope you've all had a very pleasant leave, but now it's over. Today starts your second year at Cranwell, a year in which you get down to some serious flying. I suppose you've all read the papers lately, and some of you may be wondering what's going to happen to the Royal Air Force in the future, when push-button warfare and robot aircraft become the order. Well, don't let it depress you. None of these things can entirely replace the pilot or the spirit of the service. The demands the Royal Air Force will make in your brains, your strength and your nerves will be higher than ever before. We carry no passengers at Cranwell, and your work starts now. Good luck, gentlemen. Carry on, Blake. Sir? All right, chaps, grab your kit and get going. Hmm?
Delta Bravo. The air is much more turbulent than the map briefing said. They've no doubt failed to take into consideration the increase of convection currents when they made their assessment. Thank you, Delta Bravo. I will see that Matt is severely reprimanded. Uh -huh. to be horsewhipped, breach of the peace, imprisonable offence. My cows won't give milk for a week. Nor will my chickens. And my brother, who was fishing with his fiancée, swears he didn't get a nibble all day. I have here a full list, low-level flying, upsetting cows, obstructing egg-laying, and forcing Colonel to fall on backside. All right, all right, thank you. Well, I'm going to turn the whole matter over to the Wing Commander, who is responsible for flying discipline. Very good, sir. You can rest assured that the matter will be well taken care of. Well, I hope it won't be any inconvenience. Commandant has received complaints of vulgar exhibitionism in the low-flying area. Now, you're all there. I believe one of you is the culprit. I don't have to tell you that this sort of thing merits instant dismissal. There's no room in our service for anyone who cannot be trusted to stick to the rules. However, one thing saved you. The aircraft responsible was not identified. Sir, if I may... No one gave you permission to speak. But I'm warning you, from now on, I shall watch you like a hawk. In the future, you may not be so lucky. All right, Flight Sergeant. Left top! Sir, may I just say... Get out! Left well, quick march! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right! Excuse me saying, Sir, sir, but aren't you rather sticking your neck out? I mean, do you think he's really worth it? Yes, Blake, I think he is. I hope you realize if it wasn't for Rudge, you'd have been chucked out. I tried to tell him, didn't I? No, you didn't try very hard. Now you've got us all in the dirt. He's a great one to bleat about discipline. And I'll tell you something else, he won't chuck me out. Oh, you're pathetic, Winchester. Do you really think he's afraid of you? Maybe. Why? It doesn't matter. If you've got anything to say about Wing Commander Rudge, say it to me.
everything in hand, Flight? Very well in hand, sir. Thank you, Flight. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I I'm thinking of launching my saucer, you know. It's all ready. Oh, yes. Well, I'm free. How about you? I thought this afternoon, if you fellas... Walk up, walk up, ladies and gentlemen. It is now my proud privilege to present the launching of the only genuine flying saucer ever to be made in the workshops at Cranwell. Positively its first performance, the Endicott Flying Saucer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Now we. Hi. Yeah. Well, here we go. In in just five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire. <laughs> making safe for the commandant house. Oh, no. Thank you so much. It's so peaceful and quiet here. One would hardly believe one was in the heart of the Royal Air Force. No, it is peaceful, isn't it? extraordinary. I seem to have seen this before somewhere. Repair of window, four pounds eighteen and six. Replacement of crockery, three pounds six and tuppence. Repolishing of table, two pounds ten. Sundries, fourteen and sixpence. Total, eleven pounds nine shillings and tuppence. This sum, flight cadet Endicott, will be deducted from your pay. All right, flight sergeant. Left turn, left rail, quick march. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Endicott. Sir? Did you, uh... Um... Did you make this thing entirely by yourself? Yes, sir. I can see how you get into the air, but uh, how do you control the direction of flight? That is, when you do. Oh, it's quite simple, actually, sir. Excuse me. You see, the whole disc, sir, oscillates in a circular motion, thus causing the main and alternating thrust, sir. Hmm. Damned ingenious. And what about stability? Well, the gyroscope inside, sir, is coupled to a Bowden cable, which serves the main aerons. Mm -hmm. Jet Solos, Fletcher, Endicott, and Winchester. <laughs> all the old firm together. This should please Winchester. It's about time something did. <laughs> Charlie, clear taxi, runway 27, service wind 250, 20 knots. Controller. 
Keep with the warning, sir. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Line squall approaching. Wind gusting up to 35 knots. Cancel solar flights. Tower to Delta Charlie. Flight cancelled. Delta Charlie, I repeat. Flight cancelled. Return to dispersal. Line squall approaching Cranwell area. Repeat. Return to dispersal. Return to dispersal. Line squall approaching Cranwell area. <laughs> I can't hear a word. That man's taking off. Stop him. Tata Delta Charlie. Winchester, sir. Tower to Delta Charlie, do you hear me? I say again, Tower to Delta Charlie, do you read? No contact, sir. The radio must be out. Radio. I believe that of anyone but Winchester. again. Cramwell to Delta Charlie, do you read? Cramwell to Delta Charlie, do you read? No answer. I can see him. He's approaching Cranwell now. He's heading for runway 27. Just to say now, sir. Oh, send him in. Well? You wanted to see me about today's solo, sir. What about it? Well, I, I had a bit of radio trouble, sir. Don't tell me that. I had your radio thoroughly checked this afternoon. There's nothing wrong with it. You switched it off, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, I did. I'm sorry, sir. Well, it's just that I was all set to go and the weather didn't look too bad to me. Oh, the weather didn't look too bad to you. Since when do you make the rules around here? You think you're rather smart bringing that plane in. But let me tell you something. You're not a pilot, you're a juvenile delinquent. The Commandant's given orders for you to be grounded pending an inquiry. All right, sir, I did hear the order and I ignored it. I don't know why. I just felt so keyed up I couldn't turn back. Read that and initial it. Does this mean my dismissal, sir? Yes. Well, didn't you disobey an order once, sir? You can go, Winchester.
Uh, hello, Granite. Excuse me, gentlemen, will you? Yes, sir. Well, what did he have to say? Well, sir, it isn't what he said so much as the way he felt. He escaped. You understand, sir, all good pilots know that feeling. Too bad, isn't it? In a few months' time, that boy would have passed out from Cranwell with honors. So we throw the book at him. We lose a pilot almost at the end of his training. Won't you be getting something, Granite? Discipline? No, sir. I'm not forgetting. I believe it'll come. But the boy who brought that vampire back today has the makings of a fine pilot. Granite, you know as well as I do that Winchester's been guilty of gross disobedience. I know you broke the rules once yourself, and the boy's father died trying to protect you. And now you're trying to protect him. You may feel you owe him something, but the Royal Air Force doesn't. Anyway, those are my views. I'll leave the decision to you. So the boyfriend's had it this time. Bless this food to our use and ours in thy service. Amen. to sit down, sir. Permission granted. Time. <laughs> May I do much? No, sir. Take a picture. Oh, lovely. Really? Oh, thanks awfully. <laughs> nice fellow, yes, yes. He's an idiot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, Brisbane's New York.
York in 35 minutes? Yeah, no. Mm. <laughs> Would you like a glass of wallop, sir? Oh, oh, I have a whiskey and soda, thank you. Whiskey and soda. Barman, can I have a whiskey and soda and a beer for me, please? Thank you. Of course, you're not serious. Serious, sir? I've never been more serious in my life. Oh, Do you realize that all these runways will become obsolete and a flying saucer with variable thrust will be able to land anywhere? Perhaps I haven't quite understood you. Surely in that case... Oh, hello, wing commander. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, let's look at it this way, sir. If you can imagine a vast wing, crew and passions of space inside is like, uh, how can I put it? Like a, the booking hall in Piccadilly Underground. And the whole thing is stabilized by gyroscopes. Is he boring you, sir? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, not a bit. I'm, I'm fascinated. Well, as I was saying, sir, even an idiot could understand this. The whole thing is powered by gyroscopes so that when the thrust brakes are applied, she can hover over a vast yeah. city and come Excuse me, sir. Yeah. You want it on the telephone? Downing Street. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you. You will excuse me, won't you? Certainly, sir. Uh, you, you mind? Oh, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> what a charming old gentleman. Downing Street. That pilot officer in the kitchen was the Minister for Air. Mr. Grant, was it? Well, I won't need this for a start, will I? The old wings. Oh, well, back to the old training plane. Where's my luck gone? Tell him his number three is keeping too far away in his line of stern runs. And get them to come over again. Very good, sir. Tower to Kessel, blue leader. The wing commander wants to take your line of stern run again. Tell your number three is keeping too far away. Over. Blue leader. Blue leader to blue section. We'll do the line of stern run again. Number three, you've been keeping too far away. Close it up. Gentlemen, I have some good news for you. 
The Commander-in-Chief has picked your team for the aerobatic display at Farnborough this year. He says you gave the best exhibition of formation aerobatics he's seen in years. I haven't such a high opinion of you, yet. But I believe you can and will be the best ever at Farnborough, when you get there. But before then, you have a lot of hard work in front of you. Squadron Leader Blake. Thank you, sir. I want the aerobatic team in my office at 08.30 tomorrow. Day, Fletcher, Endicott, Wilson. Winchester. Sir. You'll be a reserve member. Reserve? By my order. That's all, gentlemen. Yes, sir. you check the serviceability of the aircraft? Yes, sir. we should have six out for it. That should be enough. Yes, sir. sir! May I have a word with you, sir? Yes. All right, Blake. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? You've kept me out of the Farnborough team, sir. I haven't kept you out. You've done that yourself. May I ask what's wrong with my flying? There's nothing wrong with your flying. Then it's me. Look here, I don't have to explain my actions to you. But since you appear to be suffering from a fractured ego, let me put you straight about a couple of things. One, you have the makings of a first-class pilot. Two, your aerobatics are skillful, impressive, exceptional, if you like. But you're a one-man show, Winchester. You want to be the producer, the director, and the star performer. Farnborough's a team job. You haven't yet learned to fit into a team. You mean I don't fit in at all? I didn't say that. Well, that's what you mean, isn't it? Winchester, be careful. Be careful of what, sir? In your rank? You can't fault my flying, so you'll fault me. Why not be open about it? I'm warning you. You're heading straight for a court-martial. I said, why not be open about it? I know exactly what happened to my father. You were his wingman, weren't you, during the war over France? He ordered you back to base, but you were the one-man show then, weren't you? And you slid off on your own, and he went after you to help you. Get out. He went to help you, and he was killed, and you were responsible. For the last time... You're punishing me because of your conscience. Well, I've had enough. I know you can kick me out, but I'm ready, sir. All right, hold the line, please. Uh, duty officer, please. Yeah. Huh? Duty officer speaking. Right, thank you very much. Your friend Winchester's in trouble. That's not unusual. Do you want to handle it? Where is he? The star and garter. Oh, let's get down there. Okay. Time, gentlemen. Drink up now. It's after time. Come along, sir. Past time. Now then, sir, come along before you do any sit damage. Down. I don't want to sit down, so all I've got to do is close the bar. You'll find that I shall listen to your problems with sympathy and understanding if you'll only sit down. But I have a heart. I just want you to be happy, that's all. Oh, no. Oh, you're all right now, so here's your friends. Firm. Sorry, come on, Cinderella. Roger, my old son. Well, come on, Evan. You must all have a drink. No, no, come on. No, no, no. All my friends want a drink. Don't you? Oh, now, what do you want no, first? Look, look, uh, we, let's go, we, Tony. We've got the car Let's go. Outside. We're going to take... We mustn't do. Listen, we, we, we've got a car Four pints. Look, we're going to take yours. Back. Come on, Tony. Come on. Who sent you? How about a nice black coffee? No one. Now, don't tell me. Come on. Come on, Tony. Rudge. Take it. it's not Rudge. Oh, my son. I remember something. Come on. If I've got anything to say about Rudge... I'm supposed to say to you, aren't I? That's it. Then I'll say it. Right. I don't like him. And I only wish you brought him here with you so I could tell it to his face. Well, here we go again. Oh, no, come fellas. On. Look, come on. We ordered four drinks. Come on. Yeah, we ordered four drinks. Come on. Well. Good evening, sir. Seems to be a spot of trouble in the junior officer's quarters tonight, sir. This chap, Winchester, seems Winchester. to be causing... Why the devil do I have to be reminded of Winchester? I'm sorry, sir. I thought I ought to let you Sick know... Sick and tired of the sound of his name. I don't want to hear it again. And keep him out of my sight, do you understand? Yes, sir.
rear wing leader, dark blue section. Follow me to 40,000 feet for a tail chase. Heading 065. Cabin pressure on. Check oxygen. Emergency. Can you see him? Bear wing leader to tower. Yes, I can see him. He's falling out of formation. I'm following. Bear wing leader to dog blue four. Do you read me? Blue four, do you hear me? Pull out of your dive. I say again, pull out of your dive. Pull out. Blue four, do you hear me? Pull out of your dive. Pull out. Stand by. 
150, 22.30 hours. Now, I don't care what you do with the watchful hours of the night, but we take off at dawn. I hope there'll be no casualties <laughs> or complications. <laughs> Good night. Good night, sir. 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 Should we try that again? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we'd better get a good night's sleep. One, hmm? two, three. Oh. special reason. As you know, our hunters are to be equipped with the latest air-to-air -air missile. This is a new weapon and places upon each one of you a great responsibility. Tomorrow morning, A and C flights will carry out refresher training in air-to-air -air firing. Any questions? 
Now, a word of caution. You all know you form part of a great continental defense system. But remember, these territorial limits are very clearly defined. Don't fly outside them or you may get into serious trouble. You could be fired upon. That's all, gentlemen. <coughs> Sam, I'd like to suggest we stop. He never lets up, does he? Thank heavens he doesn't, else I wouldn't be here. The new squadron is on the air firing range now, sir. Wing Commander Rudge is observing. three and four, I believe you can now be trusted with bows and arrows. Two unidentified aircraft crossing the border in the target area, sir. Curfew calling Magpie Red Leader. Investigate unidentified aircraft at 30,000 feet, crossing frontier into target area at Hotel Oscar 5-4. Over. Roger. Wilco. Red 3 and 4 from Magpie Red Leader. Break off and investigate unidentified aircraft at 30,000 feet, crossing border at Hotel Oscar 5-4. Roger 3. Calling Magpie, Red 3 and 4. Bandit at 3 o'clock, 20 miles, 34,000 feet. Vector, port, 030. Over. Red 4 to Red 3. Tally ho, bandits, 2 o'clock. They're getting very close now, sir. Curfew. Red 3 and 4, you're getting too close to the border. Return to base. I say again, return to base. Wing leader from Red 3. Heavy ACAC fire from northeast. Red 4 is out of sight. Red 3 from Magpie Red Leader. I am at 12 o'clock, 3,000 feet above you. Join me, heading 030. I will try and locate Red 4. I've got him. Keep me in sight, Red 3. Bank by Red Leader to Red 4. Do you hear me? Pull out, do you hear? I can't. Well, if you can't pull out, get out. Eject. It's no use. It won't work. Well, try to stick again. Get it back. Red 4, new speed, I'm coming after you. Red 4 from Red Leader. Can you make more height? I think my elevators are damaged. Stay with me, I'll help you back to base. Red 4, are you well enough to take an order? Yes, sir. Then cut the chatter. Hold it, Red 
Sir? Doctor tells me you're in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. Well, sir. Thank you, sir. You'll find me fair, firm, and friendly. And I'm here to listen to your problems with sympathy and understanding. Remember at all times, should you encounter an officer, those gentlemen that have no hats will turn and face the officer. Those gentlemen with hats will raise them. No smoking on the camp roads. Keep your hair cut, rooms clean, kit tidy. Women spotless, language moderate. I just want you all to be happy. 